Hello, family photography here with another quick video. Um, it's going to be the second installment for a common mistake. This time we're going to be talking about the common mistakes while shooting teams or groups. As always, before we continue, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that are be coming up. Let's talk about the mistakes to avoid while shooting teams or groups. Some of them are the same as the situation in the individuals, just have to be a little bit more careful about others. Some are going to be a couple of new ones. First common mistake is underexposing. Underexposing is when the photo is too dark. And although we may have uh, the amazing editing team that will be able to recover a photo like this one, sometimes it's better to make sure that you have the photo for the team. So we're trying to make sure that you have the settings, at least a very decent, not underexposed photo. To avoid this kind of mistake, the first thing you have to do is check your settings, especially use ISO. Make sure that you are in the correct ISO for this kind of situation. The other one is check your exposure meter. Sometimes the dials move. Sometimes the light is like not quite there to jump to the next ISO. But the exposure, the exposure meter is going to help you to get that a little bit more brightness than we need. And one that a lot of people forget is check the brightness on your screen. If you're shooting, depending on the screen, sometimes we forget that that screen is like a TV has its own brightness that has nothing to do with how the photo is actually doing. Like you see here in the photo with the overexposed, the problem is it's like it's too bright. And sometimes when you get too bright, it's like, yeah, we can probably pull it, pull it back in, in Lightroom and Photoshop. But sometimes you lose information and you lose part of it, especially like white shirts, like um, the skin, basically lose that information. So like I said, make sure to check your settings, make sure to check your exposure meter, and make sure to check the, the brightness of your system. If you can, come in early, make sure to check the good location that you can see, and keep looking at your setting as the light changes, especially for outside. The next one we're going to be discussing is bad posing. Um, a common mistake while shooting team photos is not directing the subject to a specific poses or making sure that they are fully engaged to, to what you're doing. Um, we have a different varieties of ages, and so it is very important that you pick a pose that it's it's good for their age, that they're going to be able to do and be able to hold for a couple of seconds while you take the photo. It's very important. Another thing that you have to be aware is like with having big groups and that you have to divide in different um, levels, like, you know, people sitting in the floor, people kneeling, and then people standing that each row, if you pick a pose for each row, that everybody is doing it the same. For example, if you have the, the front doing a kneeling, make sure that everybody's kneeling with the same leg. Make sure that everybody is like fully kneeling or just sitting down um, the same. Like every row, like for example, in this photo, you have the, the last line. It's a good photo. They're holding, it's a good pose. You know, they're holding this hockey stick with one hand. But if you look at it, Everybody's using a different hand and two of the kids, is, they're not even looking at the camera. So make sure that when you're directing them, pick a pose that is good for, it's going to be easier for their age group and be aware that everybody's doing the same, the same leg, the same pose. The next one we're going to talk about is cutoff. Not only the, the common cutoffs, that is the body parts, you know, heads or feet, but we're also going to talk about any equipment or props that you use for the photo. Like the example here. We have the hockey sticks. We have the helmets. Yes, we have, we have a little bit of the foot cut off. But we also get all of the other cool props that they're using in the photo. And not only in the bottom, but on the side as well. And then you have all the extra, extra space on top. So be aware not cutting off any frame it that you leave space around. Remember, it's very important, especially in the top and bottom, to leave extra space um, so we can be better for the resizing for each individual product. The next one we're going to talk about is distractions or distracting background. This one is very challenging because we tend to shoot outside on the field, so we have a lot of things going on. The idea of the goal is to find an area in the field that you can shoot with no foot traffic or the least amount of foot traffic and without many stops in the background. For example, this photo here, 
the kids are very engaged. The kids are very cute. Posing are great. But then the framing is like too wide. So you can see all. You can see the parents. You can see the equipment random in the floor. You can see people in the background. A solution for this one would be probably move the kids to the side corner. That seems to have like no entrance. It has like a nice border of the of the field. And yeah, we still have some some things going on. But it's like minimize as much as you can all the distractions and all the weird stuff coming out in the background. The second one, this one is it's a great example. It's it's very challenging because yes, you have limited amount of time, you have the field, you have the attention for a little bit. But a solution for this one could have been just maybe moving the group in a way that because it's a good group, a large group that you can cover, for example, the table in the background, or maybe framing in a way that the people in the background is going to be too far in the corner so you can crop it out later in post-production. So I know it's challenging. So it's basically, that's what we usually ask you to come in early, scout the place, make sure that you have an idea what was going on so you can choose the best um, background uh, that has like the least amount of things distracting. And the last one we're going to be talking in this video is subjects not straight. This is very important. It's very common because sometimes the kids, you know, you have little little time to actually capture them without losing their interest. So make sure when you're posing, especially for groups, pick a pose that are according to their age group so that it would be easier for them to stand in it. It would be easy for them to keep it and be ready to shoot. Like you see here in the photo, kind of kind of looks good that the goalie was going to do like a goalie pose, but then the other kid is kind of like mimicking but it came to the point that it's like, looks silly and goofy. So make sure that, first of all, pick a pose that is it's good, it's easy for them to understand. And make sure that you are telling them exactly how the pose should look like. And be ready to shoot. Because you may have only a couple of minutes before losing their attentions again. And there you have it. This is some of the common mistakes that we have seen in the field while shooting teams. Make sure to review those those posting videos. Make review. Be comfortable with your camera. Be comfortable with your settings. Be comfortable with the type of light, the changes of light. It, and make sure that you pick poses that are according to their age group so it will be easy to have them engage, have them fun, and be ready to shoot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get access to all the new videos that are coming up. And don't forget to click on that little bell for the notifications so you can get them as soon as we get them out. Thank you and see you next time.